من به دلیل علاقه ای که به ساز ویولنسل دارم و همچنین در دهه پنجا در دانشگاه تهران دانشکده هنر و زیبا ارکستری داشتیم که در اونجا ویولنسل می زدم تصمیم گرفتم که قطعی برای ویولنسل بنویسم که هم حالا هوای موسیقی ایرانی رو داشته باشه و هم دارای تکنیک هایی که در موسیقی غربی معمول هست باشه این قطعه در دستگاه نوا و بر مبنای گوشه نیشابورک نوشته شده اجرای این قطعه توسط یکی از بهترین نوازندگان امریکا به نام بنجامین کپس انجام شد که بسیار به نواختن این قطعه علاقه من شد و در دانشگاه میشیگان این قطعه رو اجرا کرد و همچنین در همون دانشگاه که سمت استادی داشت داره این قطعه رو به هنرجوانش تدریس میکنه When I first saw these pieces, I thought, yeah, yeah, this will be a really fun project. It should take me about a week to get them together, maybe a couple of weeks for a recording shape. Uh, and the, the more I got to know them, and the more I noticed the expectations of the, the composer, um, the more I realized it was going to be mo more like a matter of months, um, plus a little bit. So uh, the experience of learning them was, was very unique. We, we did a lot of... Um, We spent a lot of time communicating about how I would interpret these works to make sure that we really captured the spirit that uh, David Dion had in mind. Um, there were some, some elements that made it extremely difficult. For example, there were virtuosic passages of runs that were very rapid, some oftentimes down a single string, um, and uh, also the speed at which um, these pieces were written makes things always a little bit harder because you have to spend so much time practicing them over and over again to be able to execute them at the perfect speed. It's quite obvious to the listeners that there's a lot of material that's virtuosic, um, fast, and very colorful, demanding a lot from the performer. Um, but then at the same time, there are sections that are more on the lyrical side of music and, and offer the performer and the listener uh, more room to, to experience the music. Maybe silence becomes even a part of the piece at times, how long you wait in between phrases, for example. Um, and then there are also sections that kind of exist somewhere in between both of those extremes. And this, in a way, can sometimes be the most challenging parts, where you're not playing something that's completely virtuosic, and you're not playing something that's uh, entirely lyrical. And you have to somehow blend the two styles to make a more um, centerline type of musical expression. <laughs> As a Western musician, it's not often that I come into contact with Persian music. Uh, it's been such a treat to dive into this 
style and this genre and learn the little details and the larger structures that make this music so unique compared to what I'm used to studying and performing. Uh, for example, in the Neshavorak, uh, learning about the specific mode and scale that the piece is in offered a glimpse into how the composer chooses the notes that he does for us to play. Uh, there's, there's an element of Persian style that is completely recognizable and um, very much important to how the piece functions in performance. And the virtuosity does at times take a back seat to the expressive qualities of the piece as well. خیلی باعث خوشحالی من شد که این گونه قطعات میتونه در رپرتوار نوازندگان خوب غربی قرار بگیره و شنونده غیر ایرانی رو با فضای موسیقی ایرانی آشنا کنه.
Thank you.